Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you from all over the country and all over the world heading into our live tonight from Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So we're going to have an exciting night tonight. I am going to play with our mini slimline dies, and I'm going to make a mini slimline card featuring our Woodland Friends stamp set, and we're going to build a little scene. Now, the last card that I did this way, I did the mini slimline card in this orientation. Today, I thought I would build kind of a long skinny scene, a long horizontal scene this way. And um, instead of just cutting out some sea glass cardstock like we did last time, I thought it'd be fun to do a little ink blending to create the sky and give the sky a little bit more texture. So uh, I hope you guys are having a great week so far. Happy Monday. I'm just seeing lots of you coming in. So um, uh, I'm just going to wait another minute. Um, and on my last live, I did ask you guys if you liked the quotes that I used to do before or if you guys didn't like them. And I went back and looked through all of your comments, and a few of you didn't like them, but overwhelmingly, <laughs> most of you said, yeah, please bring them back. So I have a little quote for you tonight. Um, and it's um, a quote that I found that that I really like. It's It's about marriage. <laughs> I figured rather than do something really deep, I would just do a little marriage quote. So, um, all right. Well, I think lots of you are coming in so we can get started. So let's take a look at the stamp set that we're going to use tonight. Tonight, we're going to use the Woodland Friends stamp set. And we've been doing lots and lots of wreath building. In fact, even my first Woodland Friends card was a wreath builder card. And I just popped the little scene in the center. Uh, I really like this stamp set, and I think the greetings are really fun for just about anybody on your card making list. I am really having a good time with this, and I also want to expand on this scene making. So I think my next scene card, not tonight's card, but my next scene card, I'm going to do more of a nighttime scene to show you how to kind of do a night sky. And... Um, I have some other ideas too for how to do a winter scene, but that's going to come a little bit later next month or later this month. So we'll do the scene. Uh, I'm sorry, next month in September, we'll start doing some winter scenes for some Christmas cards. All right. So tonight what we're going to do is I bought some more of these um, magnets and I put my whole master layouts it doesn't really fit perfectly, but my whole master layouts uh, six die set, I got it crammed on here on this magnet. So you can see all of the different dies that come in this set. You get lots of different dies to build a scene. There's the moon too. We need to do a nighttime one for sure. All right. So to begin tonight's card, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of cardstock and I just cut this bigger than the mini slimline die. So basically you can see it, it's pretty big. There's the mini slimline die. What I wanna do is I wanna create a really nice sky that looks a little bit like fluffy with clouds. So I'm, this is one of those times where you don't care so much about getting that perfectly smooth blend. You actually don't want it to look quite so smooth because it's going to look more like a sky if it's not so smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the Gina K Designs blending brushes and I'm going to ink up the blending brush with some sea glass ink. Now you can also use ocean mist for this. That would look really pretty. If you want a much more vibrant sky, switch down to turquoise sea or, you know, if you're really getting into dusk, maybe even tranquil teal. But sea glass is a good one to get started with. So I'm going to start at the top here. I'm going to work my way down. And I'm just doing a fast circular motion. I'm getting lots of the turquoise, lots of that sea glass in there. Now I'm going to come across again. I'm going to start just around here. And I'm going to do the same thing. But you see how I'm just leaving some of that white in there? I'm not worrying too much about that white. I'm going to do the same thing down here, kind of leaving some white spaces open. 
super easy way to create a sky. Of course, we still have to have our little cartoony cloud in there because it's just fun. But you can see how that really does create a lot of those cumulus clouds. Is that what they are, Tom? Yes, they are. All right. It's what I thought. I watch the weather every once in a while. So I'm really just leaving. This kind of reminds me of, remember Charlie Brown when Snoopy was up in the Red Baron? I kind of kind of feel like that was that kind of sky. So I actually have no idea. Oh, you don't watch cartoons? No, they about the cumulus clouds. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you sounded like you knew what you were what you were doing, so I'm going with it. Now, if you want to accent those white spots a little bit more, come back down and add a little bit more of that turquoise around those white spaces just to create some darker patches in there. I hope that makes sense. Any date on the next release yet? Well, we're hoping for August 16th. Um, I'm still missing three stencils, so I am praying that everything is going to be here in time. If anything changes, though, we will let you guys know right away, but the plan is August 16th. Okay, so that was super easy to do, and the best thing about it is this requires no ink blending skill. This is what people actually complain about if they're not getting ink blending, that, they're, that their ink blending <laughs> looks like this. So anybody can create this and it just looks like a nice sky. All right. So I'm going to get my die cutting machine here and we're going to do a little bit of die cutting for the scene. And we're going to make these cards, this card, a horizontal card like this. Now, I do have two cards to give away tonight because um, in my last video, I made a sample card that I wanted to show you guys. I used it as, I don't know what I used it for. Either I used it as a guide or something like that. Oh, I know what I did. I made a sample and it was the wrong size. But I'm going to give that away tonight. And I did turn it into a card. And I used key lime cardstock on it too, and it looks really pretty. So that's going to be my second card that I'm giving away tonight. I'm going to give this one tonight too. Oh, look at my dirty plates. So I've been keeping paper towels close by so I can wipe off all the dirt from my cutting plates. And there you go. So now you can see those nice clouds in there. And remember that um, I always post really high quality photos both on YouTube and on Facebook. So, um, you know, if you want to see a high quality card, maybe get more of the detail of that sky, check out the community tab on YouTube or join our Facebook group, Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends, and you can see it there. So that was super easy. No, Key Lime's not a new color, but I don't use it enough. So it feels like a new color to me. That's a great question. Okay. So now we're going to cut a couple grass hills. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use this hill right here. This is the hill. And I think, let me see something here. Is this big enough? No. So we want to cut this. I'm going to just cut this down a little bit so it's not so big. I can always use that last little piece. But I want to make sure that I can cut most of this out. All right. So I'm going to cut a hill right here like this. And then I can just tear the sides off because it's really not that important. So I'm going to make one hill that's a little lower like this. We'll cut this out. I'm telling you, I love this die set so much. This is like, this is my new mojo starter this and the wreath builder, because I can just sit and cut elements out and just save them for when I feel a little bit more uh, like I want to stamp. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but I'm going to see how this one is a little more shallow. I'm going to make this one a little bit deeper. So it's a little bit wider. Okay. Yes, these plates, I can wash them. I can. I can put them in the dishwasher. Um, and what I like to do is I like to get like a toothbrush and I like to scrub because all these cut lines are where all the 
paper is stuck in there and it's on both sides and it's on both plates because I'm just a messy stamper and a messy crafter. But I take a toothbrush and a little dish soap and I get all in there and I try to scrub as much out as possible. And then I put them in my um, dishwasher on the top shelf of the dishwasher, the top basket, and I just wash them. And they come out nicer. They're, they're still not as nice as, you know, brand new, obviously, but... Um, but I have to take them home now because my my dishwasher's at home and I my craft room's at work. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut the ends off of these. Actually, let me let me cut all the rest of the stuff first, okay? I definitely want to have a cloud, so I've got all my scrap paper over here. I'm just gonna grab a little piece of white scrap paper. This is great now. I'm using all of my little tiny pieces of scrap paper to cut clouds out. It's really awesome. So I think I'll cut this tinier cloud out. And you know, it really does pay to just cut a couple out at a time. You can save them for later, but as long as you're cranking the die cutting machine, you might as well put some orange pieces and cut some suns and some green pieces and cut some treetops. Just cut a whole bunch of stuff all at once. Okay, so there's my clouds. I have two clouds there. And then I'm going to cut a sun. So I do have a little piece of, um, I couldn't find a little piece. So I have a big piece of sweet mango. Now I've used tangerine twist in the past to cut the sun, but sweet mango is really pretty too. So I thought I'd do a sweet mango one today. Also, if you want a really, really, uh, see, a lot of these elements, if you want them to have a little more texture, just cut them in white and ink blend over them. That's another fun way to use them. So there's my little sunshine. Okay. And then let's see, what else do I need? I think I need a tree. So I'm, I might do a tree in a different color. So this is going to be my grass. So I think I'm going to use some jelly bean green. This is grass green, of course. I picked it for the grass. I think I'll use a little jelly bean for a tree because I haven't done a tree in my card yet. So this image right here, this die right here, could be a cloud or it could be a treetop. So I'm going to use it as a treetop today. I think it was designed to be a treetop, but then when I realized how close the clouds and the treetops looked, I thought they could be a little interchangeable there. All right, so we have a tree. We're just going to have a single tree because we want to have more than one animal today. And somebody asked me to color the raccoon, and I'm going to try that today. I'm going to attempt the raccoon. Okay, and then we have two different trunks. We have a shorter one and a taller one. So... Oh, uh, let's see. What should I do? I think I'll do the taller one. Let's have a taller tree. So I have warm cocoa. Of course, you can use darker brown, but the warm cocoa seems to stand out a little bit more. Charcoal brown and dark chocolate are really dark, and they look great, but warm cocoa is fun. And you can actually wood grain your trunk if you want using white cardstock and just drag your ink pad down on it so you could have a more realistic look. But there's my little wooden tree. And you can see how cute that is when you put them together. It does make a really cute little tree. You know what this kind of crafting reminds me of? And I don't know about you guys if you like this when you were kids. I'm going to age myself now. But it reminds me of color forms. Who remembers color forms? Oh my goodness, they were the most fun things ever. I love them. Color forms were great. I'm gonna put my die cutting machine aside for a little bit because I'm gonna use it again to cut out some animals. Now I do wanna show you that some people were asking about the grass and I cut some grass here. I'll show you. So I cut a couple grass things but this grass die is a little short for the um, master layouts. So what I recommend is if you want to use the grass and you're using the master layout slimline, you're making a slimline, just attach it together in some little spot. And then before you cut the ends off where you want them, kind of figure out like where you're going to put your tree. So for example, let's say I was going to put my tree and I would 
show the stitching maybe because that would be kind of cute to show the stitching and then cut it you know so the stitching shows on the side or you can cut it with your die which i'll show you that too um and then you could do something like that and then you can just kind of put your little tree right over the seam there so you don't notice it as much so that's one way to kind of have the grass expand because none of these dies are quite as long as a slim line, but the way you use them and the overlapping techniques that we use, it doesn't really matter. All right, let's zoom. Well, let's not zoom yet. Let's bring the die cutting machine back because for those of you that missed my slim line tips and tricks, my mini slim line scene building tips and tricks, I am gonna do the same thing for this card. So, I've got these two pieces right here, and you don't even have to worry about cutting them. You can just tear them off the ends. Don't worry about that, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the mini slimline stitched die, and we're gonna cut a little piece of this right here, okay? Just like this. Now, if you haven't seen this before, this is really cool. If you've seen it before, just bear with us. We know a lot of you guys have already seen this. Okay. So there we go. So now what this is going to do, and I'm going to trim this off just with a pair of scissors here, because I don't need this whole thing. I'm going to cut that right there. So what this does is it creates a, hopefully you can see that, it creates a stitched edge. So then you can go outside of the mini slimline die here and your stitching continues on. You see how nice that looks when the stitching continues on? Now, of course, you could layer all of this up, but you might have, like when I did the mountains in the background and then I did two layers of hills, so mountains and hills and, you know, and the actual piece itself, you're die cutting through five pieces of cardstock that's almost a hundred pound. That's really hard to do. So I highly recommend that you don't do that and that you, you know, you just go ahead and cut, cut it, cut the single pieces at a time. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm just going to trim this now. I'm going to go right down to there. Now the die would have done that, but I tore it. So that was probably not a good idea to tear it. But this piece can come down way down like this. And then I have like a second little hill over here. Okay. So we're going to make this even smaller. And I'm going to cut this once again. Now you have to remember which side you already cut. So I cut this side over here. Now I need to cut the other side. So I'm going to do that. Okay. I guess I really didn't even need to cut that little point down there because the die itself would have cut that off. Okay. So there we go. So there is the other side of that. And you can see when I put these together, you'll be able to see it better when I tape it. But when I put these together, now you've got your hills and all of that stitching is going to line up really nicely. Hopefully you can see that there. Okay. Now we need to do something to those hills as well. But I want to show you what I did here. I cut a tangerine one and I think it's kind of cool and it gets the sun out of the way. I actually cut a piece of the sun with the stitched dies. I always think it looks better when you see it against white. So can you see that, the stitching there? Hopefully you're able to see that. Maybe I can zoom in just a little bit on this here. Okay. Is that blurry at all, Tom? Did I go too close? No, I can, it works. Okay. I might back out just a little bit. Okay, so I cut the little sun there. 
And this way you could add the sun up into the corner like that so it's just coming in and you still have that perfect little stitching. So I'll show you how I did that kind of the same way. I just took the sun and I just picked a spot like right there. And then I cut that out. Okay. So this one is the sweet mango one, the one that I just showed you as a demo. There's a little piece of the sun. <laughs> I don't know if you could use that for anything other than maybe if you were making something and you needed some eyelashes or a little crown on the head of something, you could use it for that. <laughs> but here we go. Chin stash. A chin stash. <laughs> So there we go. So that could go up into that corner. There we go, like that. So which color do you like better? Is that one kind of drab? Do you like the brighter one better? I think I do. I thought I was going to like this one better, but I really like the bright one. So I think we should use the, the tangerine one. But, you know, hey, if you're on another planet, you could have a sun on either side. Light coming out. <laughs> that would be good for a sunset. That would be good for a sunset. Yes. Like kind of, you know, and that's the other thing with these suns. I mean, if you wanted to do a sunset, you definitely could cover the sun with the hills and have it going down in the sky. So that's another way that you could do it if you wanted to do a sunset. Okay, so I think we have some pieces here, and we can at least design our little scene in the back. So Connie asked if you're going to darken the edge of the hills. I see. am. I'm definitely going to darken the edges. So I did that with the grass. I think you can see here with the grass. I darkened the edges of the blades of the grass. This way, if you want to do more than one layer, both layers show. If you don't darken the edges, then when you pile them up on top of each other, the bottom layer just kind of blends right in. So I like to use a much darker color of ink. And so since I'm using grass green here, I'm going to use fresh asparagus and get some nice dark edges along my hills. So I'm using a blending brush. This is kind of the same technique that we used to do in the old days using a sponge just getting a little bit of ink onto the edge of the hill. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side here. And I recommend doing both hills, not just the one you want to stand apart from the other one because then there's more consistency in it. Okay. Now you can see that you can definitely see the separation in those hills. All right, so let me get my cloudy sky here and we'll start super easy. We're just going to use tape to put these together. I don't know. It's kind of also like paper dolls for me. And I always loved paper dolls when I was a kid. Paper dolls, color forms, anything that kind of built a fun little scene or where you could kind of tape things onto other things or use those weird fold over tabs. I don't know what they were thinking with the paper dolls. Well, the color forms really, they kind of revolutionize the whole process, right? Let's get rid of that little fleck of whatever that is. Okay, there we go. Okay, and now I'm gonna add the other piece so you can cut your hills wherever you want. They don't have to be offset to one side. They can meet in the middle like a valley, however you want to do it. I don't really plan. I just like whatever happens, happens, and it feels like it's different every time. You can also use three pieces, so you can have an extra hill in there if you want. There we go. So you can see how nice that stitching is. It looks like it's very continuous going all the way around. And instead of trying to line up your cardstock, just try to line up your stitching and it will line up your cardstock for you. Okay. All right. 
So now we're going to do the same thing with the tree. We're not going to re-ink the brush because this is a much lighter green. So we're just going to use whatever's left on this brush. And we're just going to add a little accent around the edge of the tree. And it just gives the tree a little bit of, it's kind of like when you color with Gamsol and you color around the outside and you blend it toward the center so that it's lighter, it just gives it a little bit more dimension. And then we're going to add our little trunk to the tree. And then I think this tree will probably go down over here like that. For those of you that have young kids at home or you have young grandkids at home, this is a great activity for them. Just cut tons of these for them and teach them how to kind of color them a little bit and let them build scenes and color little animals and stuff. It's really very fun. I find it to be very therapeutic, actually. <laughs> I enjoy it. Okay, so I've got my trunk on my tree. And then I'm going to just take the back and I'm going to place that right on my hill right here off to the side. I want to have some room for my little animals. And of course, if you really want to get fancy, you can pop these images up to have a more three dimensional looking card. Okay. I don't know about doing any ink blending over here on the sun, but we could, we could add a little bit of something. Let's do it. Why not? Let's have a little fun and see what happens. So I think, I think a good color for the sun would be tomato soup. It's a little bit darker. So we'll add a little bit of that. And then we're just going to add it to the rays down here kind of creates a little glow. You see that? How they glow a little bit more? Okay. I'm trying to be careful not to bleed ink onto my sky here. So I'm being careful with where how I touch it. So I'm not really being very patient and letting things dry very well. That looks pretty good. There we go. You can see how that looks. All right. So I'm going to pick one of these clouds since I, I mean, we could put a cloud over here and then we could do the other cloud and we could just have it kind of going across the sun a little bit. We can have this one kind of down a little further in the sky. Do you like the way that looks? And then we still have kind of the white spots in the sky kind of coming up. Or we can just do one cloud. One cloud might be nice. This way we're not covering up too much of that background because I really love how that background looks. Okay. Well, we'll do this. Now, this whole thing could just go right down the drain when I start to color the animals. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm going to, can I pull it up? Can I pull it up? Yeah, I can. Okay. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a foam square on the back of that. I have another one that I cut out somewhere, oh, but that's the bigger one. Well, that's all right. No, I have a smaller one. I, I told you I have lots of them. I'm going to just put a foam square on that and we'll get a little dimension going on this card. Isn't that cute with the cloud kind of popped up? We could do that with the tree too, I bet. To be real gentle here. We'll put it in the same spot. Let's pop the tree up and see how it looks. I might not like it as much, but we'll see. I 
think what I'll do is before I commit, I'll just lay it there and see how it looks. Oh yeah, I love it. I love, I love the dimension of it. So what I'm gonna do here, since I put the pop, I put the foam squares on there already, before I take the little peely things off, I don't like having sticky stuff that isn't attached to the paper because sometimes you'll get hair or whatever that will get in there, you know? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my embossing magic pad and I'm just gonna tap it all over the back of this. And that gets rid of the sticky gluey feeling. Okay. All right. Now, of course, I have embossing magic all over me, but that's okay. So now it's not tacky on the back anymore. Now I can peel these off. Make sure you don't do the embossing magic pad before you, you know, after you peel these off or these won't be sticky anymore. I've done that. I speak from experience. <laughs> and I'm just going to put those right over that little spot that I made. Just want to get it straight. There we go. Okay. So I love the dimension in that. That's just fun. Okay. We could put it down more too. Oh, I'm going to leave it. <laughs> I don't think I have the wherewithal to do that. Okay. So now we've got this and we need some cute little animals sitting over here. So I'm going to stamp those and color them and then cut them. Uh, you would be wise to actually stamp them, cut them, and then color them. So let's do that. Let's stamp them first. Here's a little piece. I have some other cardstock here too. So I thought I would do two animals. I thought I would do the little squirrel and I would do the little raccoon and then I would do I'm nuts about you. That would be kind of cute. And these are little, so they'll be easy to color, quick and easy. So we'll start with the squirrel. I haven't stamped him yet. And I'm going to use some of the Gina K Designs Black Onyx ink. Ruth Ann, our smaller blending brushes have shipped. So they take a little while to get here, but they have shipped out to us. So we're uh, hoping to see them soon. Okay. So sometimes... They don't stamp perfectly the first time. That looks pretty good, but I'm going to stamp another one just because just because I want to. Okay, that one's a little bit brighter. Remember, the very first time you stamp a stamp out of the package, sometimes you need to rub it a little bit, but I mean, that looks pretty good, right? For only the second pass. All right, so we have the cute little squirrel going to name him Clarence after my friend Lydia's squirrel. She's got a little squirrel. If you follow Lydia Fiedler on YouTube, on uh, Facebook, you might see she's got a little squirrel friend. It just started coming up and she started giving it peanuts and it loves peanuts, which is super adorable. So I'm going to stamp this one twice too. Oh, that was actually a pretty good impression for the first time out of the package. Hello and welcome everyone. It's great to see you all here. It's Monday. We made it through Monday. It's always a good sign. Okay. So we have two there. Should I color first and then cut? I'll use my cutting trick so I won't mess it up. And it will be a little bit easier to have the cardstock right here like this instead of the tiny piece. All right, so we'll, woo, this is a fast camera. We moved some cameras around, so knock on wood. It's my prism color pencil. I know there's wood in there. Knock on wood, it's doing pretty well. We haven't lost you yet. But I will take this time to say that if for any reason we disappear, don't leave. We know how to come back and the screen will go black for a few minutes maybe, and then we will be back. But so far, so good. Okay. So I need, do I have a black colored pencil? I better, yes, I have a black colored pencil. I do need a little bit of black. So I was looking up what these little guys look like and they're actually brown, but they have black markings. So I'm thinking we'll go with a lighter brown. This is chocolate. 
Oh, yum. So I think what I'll do is I'll start over here and I'll color a little bit of chocolate in here. Make his ears chocolate. I don't know if his ears are supposed to be chocolate or black, but we'll make his body chocolate. I love the way Gamsol adds such a nice texture. So you know I'm going to use Gamsol. <laughs> That's all I know how to do. And then we'll get that dark darkness under his chin there. Okay. And then we're going to add some black. We'll do some black here. We'll give him his little mask. These guys are so cute in real life. Oh my word. We'll do a little bit of black up here. We're gonna blend that black into the brown. And then their tails, from the picture I saw, their tails are actually black and brown. So we're gonna kinda alternate here. I always thought they were black and white or black and gray. And then I decided to actually look. See, I don't know if that's the Mandela effect or whatever they call that, where you remember something differently than it was in real life. I don't know why that is, but I always, maybe there's different species and maybe I just latched onto the plain old Wisconsin one. <laughs> Are their feet black? Let's make them black. We'll make their little paws black. And we'll make their little feet black. I don't know if they are or not, but this is what we're doing. Okay. So let's see what happens when we try to blend this out. So I have a little bit of Gamsol here. Can you guys see okay? If you're watching on a big screen, it's probably huge. If you're watching on your iPhone, you're probably looking for a magnifying glass. Tom, your music is perfect. Okay, so I'm going to start with the brown areas first. I'm dipping my bl my blending stump into some Gamsol here. And I'm just going to blend this down a little bit. I'm leaving a little bit of white there. And this probably isn't accurate, but it's gonna have to be accurate. See, we're blending those two together. I'm turning the blending stump just to get back on the brown here. I'm gonna blend that into the, kind of looks like it is a little toupee. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of brown down here on his nose and blend that up into the black. <laughs> Too paid guy. Bring that down. Kind of into a V here. Just drag that black down. If you want a little bit more black, you can always add a little bit more maybe in the center here and we can drag that kind of down more into like a little bit of a V. Looks pretty good, right? Guys are okay with that? Now we'll add the black little mask around his eyes. Blending that Gamsol up a little bit. They look like little bandits, little bank robbers, their little masks. And then let's go a little lighter in there. I don't even know if I have a tannish pencil. This is kind of tannish. What is this color? Can't even read that beige. Yeah, let's just add a little beige in here. A 
So are we good with that? We're good with that. We'll make it work. Okay. All right. So now let's get to the body here. We'll color his little brown body. And now I don't know if they have like other markings. They might have some cute little stripes going somewhere in their bodies. I'll have to study the raccoon a little bit better to understand. But this is a special breed. <laughs> the uh, Wisconsin. We'll go a little darker in here with the brown. This is the Wisconsin breed of raccoon. We can make his belly a little black. But let's do the striped tail here. Okay, so we're going to Kind of leaving it a little lighter in the center. And then we'll go with the black parts of the tail. Hmm, it's nice. Turning the blending stump back to the brown side. Here we go. So what do you think? Is he coming along okay? He's kind of cute. All right, we'll get a little black on his paws here. I think we need a little more brown on his paws too. These little black feet. I'm pretty sure their feet are black. Okay. And should we just do a little tan here on his chest? I don't even know if he's a boy. Just coloring in a little bit of a circular motion there. I'm going to dip the other side of the blending stump in and just smooth that out a little bit. Same with this face. Okay, so there is my very weirdly colored <laughs> little uh, raccoon. So for my squirrel, we'll make him brown too. That's easy, right? Brown and tan. Just do that. He's got a nut, an acorn. These are fun to color. I saw people um, posting their kids coloring these in our Facebook group. So cute. I love to see that. All right, let's just color this. The thing about Gamsol that's so cool is it just by itself creates texture that almost looks like fur. I think that's kind of cool. All right, we'll do his little body. Can you guys hear Tom's music okay? I think I want to make his tummy tan, even though I don't even know if that's a thing. Let's color the bottom side of his tail dark and we'll just bring it up to a lighter color toward the top. I'm trying to learn a little bit about light, but then it just, <laughs> it just makes me a little crazy sometimes and I just say I don't care if I know where the light's coming from I just want to know that there's light and dark in the project you know what I mean like there's some dark spots and then there's some light shading in there there we go that's pretty good But Gamsol is really fun to use. If you haven't used it before, I really encourage you to try it. 
it does kind of make you look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> and anything that makes me look like I know what I'm doing, I'm all for it. We'll give them brown feet too. Why not? Okay. So that acorn's going to be brown too. We'll make his face this beige color. And a little beard. I'm going to use a different blending stump. I've contaminated every part of that blending stump. So if you want to clean your blending stumps, I just use a little sandpaper. This is a sandpaper stick that you can buy in the art supply store. You can also um, use a nail file if you don't have one like this. An emery board is great. And see, I'm just turning the stick as I go and that color's just getting sanded off, but it's keeping the blending stump to a nice sharp point. So we'll just get his little beard blended out. And we'll add that same color to his chest. I know we have to do his ears. There's the... All right. So how was your day, Tom? My day was quite... Quite stress-free and relaxing. Yeah, well, yeah. that's good. Yeah. It's nice to hear. There's a little beige up here. I don't believe it, but... I'm kind of kidding. Yeah, I know. I'm just going to color that darker. It's the same beige, but you see if I just press a little harder, you get a little contrast between that and his chest. Okay. And then we'll go with the dark brown on top here. We don't have to do shading on that. I need a pencil sharpener. Let me just get my little, I use this one. This is the eye point orbit. I got mine on this one on Amazon. And I also got the electric version from my friend, Karen Hightower. She sent me that one. They're both really good. Um, I tend to take the battery operated one with me places. I wonder why I choose, chose to color that one instead of this one. I'm just looking like, did anybody else question that? <laughs> should we put some pink cheeks on him just because it's fun? I think we should. Maybe a little, a little rosiness here. So we're gonna add a little rosy cheek right there. It's cute. We can blend it out too. I mean, it's not like these are realistic, right? So if they're not realistic, we can add our own little touch of love. I want to make hard eyes on them. <laughs> okay. So there we go. They're colored in. So I used, instead of pink, I ended up just grabbing this pale vermilion and i did that because i think you know all the other parts of this card are kind of warm toned like the sun and all so i kind of played off of that i don't know if it makes that much of a difference probably not at all but yeah got to do what you got to do what you're feeling in the moment right okay now here's my die cutting trick of course most of you probably have already seen this before but we're gonna show it again because it is a good trick. It's a good trick to know. So when you have something like this and you don't want to mess it up, you've taken some time to color it, you want it to, uh, you want to be able to cut it out so that it's perfectly centered. What I do, let me find a piece of cardstock over here, a little scrap piece. I like using peach bellini for this because it's our mid-weight cardstock. It's not quite as heavy. So what I do is I cut little templates out first. So let me find my dies for this. So I'm going to need, make sure I have the right ones here. I'm going to need this and I'm going to need the little squirrel. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take those two dies 
I need to use some of those dies too, like the branch and stuff. I gotta get on that. All right, and I'm just going to cut these out onto the peach Bellini cardstock. You know what? It's good that I did them separately because I want to tape these little templates down. All right, so I'm going to hold my dies here. These little pieces I'll keep for another time. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut this apart. I'm just going to use my paper cutter because it's quick and easy. And it's just off to the side, so don't go away. Okay. So now I made these two little templates. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this panel. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see a little closer. Okay. There we go. And then I have a little bit of washi tape here. You can use washi tape or you can use purple tape or you can use whatever kind of tape you want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this over the squirrel so that he looks perfectly centered. Nice, even amount of white around the outside of him. And once I have that in place and I know where I want it to cut, I'm going to tape it down like that. And then I'm going to take the squirrel die and I'm going to drop it down in there until I feel it click in place. Then once I feel it click in place, if I feel nervous about it, I can add a little bit of tape. I've got it pressed in there nice and tight. I'll take a little bit of tape and just tape it to the die and the peach Bellini cardstock here. And now that should cut. I always do a little disclaimer because you know how things, anything can happen, especially live. That should cut with a nice, even amount of white space. It's great to see you. I'm glad you found us live too. Okay. And then you can cut that out. You pull that out and you see you've got a nice, even amount of white space. Sometimes you cut a little peach Bellini in there. That's okay. I usually just take a paper towel and just wipe that little bit of cardstock away. Okay. Alrighty. So the big trick here though, is not to throw your die away. It's real easy just to throw this away. Um, don't do that. <laughs> that's a problem. That's one that's hard to fix. Okay. So now we're gonna do the same thing again with the little raccoon up here. Try our best. Oh, I take so much time lining it up, you see? And then I have to let go because I don't have my washi tape and a lot of times I just move it. <laughs> All right, I'll go over this way just a hair. Oops. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, we're gonna drop the die in there. I felt it click. I'm gonna do this one without taping it down. Wish me luck. I think we got it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. He looks pretty even. He looks like a cross between a raccoon and maybe like a tiger, <laughs> the way I colored him. But just go with it. Bear with me. I wonder if the tips of their ears are black. I bet they are. Okay. And then we can just sit these guys together in the field. Anywhere you want on the card. You can just have them sitting on the hill together. And when I pick which animals I want to cut, I try to pick one that's facing, you know, they're facing each other, not both looking in another direction. Unless you've got two of them and then you have like a bird up here or something where they're kind of looking at the bird. All right, I'm going to put this aside for a second because we do need to cut one more thing. 
we need to cut our black panel of the slimline dies. So I cut all the other stuff using the double stitched or the stitched one, not the double stitched, the single stitched one. And now I'm going to cut a black panel. So I have a piece of black cardstock here and I'm going to cut a black panel so we have a nice little layer that makes the whole thing pop off of the card base. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, these are so fun to make, just easy. And I mean, you know me, I love flowers. We have more flowers in the Gina K Designs collection than probably most companies have. We are flower people, flower children, but it is nice to have some variety. And a lot of you were asking for it. You said, I have a lot of flowers. I just want something a little different. And so this really worked out nicely. Okay, so we're going to, let's get these guys off of here. Um, sometimes I'll just take my piece of paper towel and just wipe the edges off if there's any little frays. Don't do it with your finger. I've gotten a lot of paper cuts that way. Okay, and now I'm going to adhere this to my black panel. It's a little bumpy because there's some foam squares there. You can see how nice, though, that that just makes the whole thing pop. And then I did a card base earlier. Now, for those of you, I see this question a lot. What color um, or what size is your mini slimline? There are pe people do different sizes for mini slimline. I did our, our dies are designed to work with this size card base, which works with our mini slimline envelopes. And it's the same size as a check envelope. And the good thing about that, it might be just a hair bigger than a check envelope, but there's no additional postage required. So that's why we did this side. I checked it with my post office. They promised me that you don't need extra postage unless it's too thick. And I mean, you know, we're card makers, so sometimes that happens. But this is a six and a half inch by six and a quarter inch piece of cardstock. And on the six and a half inch side, I scored it at three and a quarter inches. Now, normally, you know, I've been making them this way, but this is a really nice size card. And I really like this for, you know, when you're giving somebody a gift of money or a check, it's kind of a nice way to present it. It's the perfect size for that. So, you know, those little ones on your list where you want to give them a little bit of money, they like that. Go to the dollar store and have some fun. <laughs> oh, yes, the good old days. Okay, so there's my little scene. And now we can either pop these guys up, which might be fun. In fact, let's do it. Let's pop them up so we have a little bit more dimension, although they are kind of cute just sitting there. Now, maybe we shouldn't pop them up because we've got everything else popped up. We'll put these guys flat onto it. Two little buddies. Okay. So if we just did the um, little squirrel alone, I'm nuts about you might be a great greeting for that. Uh, let's see, we could just do a simple happy birthday card. We could do a congratulations. We could do a thankful for you. Um, a big thank you. Why don't we just make it, well, I'm nuts about you, is so cute. Hmm. I think we'll just make it a happy birthday card because honestly, I don't know who this is going to, and I always need birthday cards. So... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see your comments where you guys wanted me to to do the uh, the pop up. Okay. So we have to make this right. This has to be right the first time. We'll make it a birthday card. I'm gonna do thankful for you because I'm sending this to one of our viewers and they might keep it and then they'll know that I'm thankful for them. Because I'm thankful for all of our viewers that come and join us. 
Okay, this is the scariest part of life right now is to wait until the very end when you've completed a card like this and then add the greeting. Very dangerous territory. <laughs> but the good thing is, is that if you mess it up, you can put a flag over it and put a different greeting. Okay, so I'm doing this with the Misty to be safe. wetness here. I'm going to back out a little bit because it's hard to get the misty in here where I want it. All right, there we go. Okay. Now I'm going to use the Gina K Designs Black Onyx Ink Cube for this. I really want to be careful not to get ink around the outside of the stamp because I do have some raised areas here. And if there's, if there's ink around the outside, it I don't know. It could get somewhere else and I don't want it to. So I'm going to use the ink cube and I'm going to just make sure it's really tight in the corner of the misty here in case I have to stamp it a second time, which wouldn't surprise me because it's a brand new stamp. Okay, here we go. I'm going to use my finger, just my finger here. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. That was a little stressful. I'm not going to lie. Kind of the wrong way to do it. Put your greeting on first and then go through all the trouble. <laughs> so there is my finished card, my cute little make a scene, build a scene. And I just wanted you to kind of get the idea of how nice that stitching looks when you do that all around the outside. Mindy Gamsol can be used with crayons too. Anything that's waxy, Gamsol will work with. Gamsol also works with watercolor pencils, but it's kind of a waste of Gamsol because water acts just like Gamsol. So you really don't have to use Gamsol, but um, it's meant to work with anything waxy. So if you have a wax crayon or maybe some kind of waxy pastel, it'll work with those as well. All right, so I'm going to take this out of the way. I'm going to put the card here, and then I'm going to show you the other card that I finished the other night. Let's zoom in a little bit more. This is like the fastest zoom. It's like whoop, <laughs> whoop, whoop. Okay, <laughs> let me show you the other card that I made, and I used Key Lime for this card. This was the card that I um, did in my last video. And it wasn't the right size for making it into too many slim lines. So I made a bigger one, but I added some gold sequins onto that. And this is a spring green Prismacolor pencil and spring green looks perfect with key lime. So this one we're going to give away as well tonight. So Tom, can you bring both of us into this kind of thing here tonight? <laughs> Let's see how high I can get my voice to go. There you are. Hey! Hello. Looking good. Yeah, you too, baby. Hey, can I tell them my quote about marriage before we pick the winner? Okay. All right. But I didn't hear it yet, so <laughs> we'll it's see okay. how it goes. <laughs> so I was looking, I don't know, you know me, I love quotes, and I was looking up quotes, and I found the best quote ever about, about a good marriage. So um, a good marriage... Ready? A good marriage is one where each partner secretly suspects that they got the better end of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a home run. Yeah. Isn't that cute? I like that quote. Yeah. I got the better end of the deal. Yeah. Well, no. I. It, it, you might suspect, but I know <laughs> that I, I, I got the much better deal for sure. Oh. All right. Well, enough of that. <laughs> but he I wants to hear I that. I don't think you know. No. Okay. So winners. People won cards. Yeah. First card. All right. Which card is the first card? Uh, would be, you tell me. Let's give away the one I made tonight. The mini slimline build a scene. All right. Thankful for you card yes. goes to Rosa Magoza. Rosa. Yay. Congratulations, Rosa. Woohoo! All right. That's awesome. Okay. And then before we do this one, I do want to say if you're watching over on YouTube, it would be fantastic if you would give us a thumbs up. And if you would 
like the video, that would be great too. Oh, that's the same thing, right? Thumbs up and like the video. I mean, subscribe to the channel. And Tom, we passed a milestone today on YouTube. What is that? We turned 155,000 subscribers today. Yes. I always am afraid to say that until there's like way over that amount because like five people could unsubscribe tonight and we'll drop below. But as of right before we went live, we were at 155,000 subscribers. So thank you all so much. That really means the world to us. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we would love you to subscribe. Also, if you hit the notification bell, I don't know where that is on the channel, but uh, hit the notification bell and you'll never miss another video. You'll get notified when a video goes live or a new video posts. All right. So yes, that was the first uh, winner. Rosa Melgoza just had to clarify. Rosa Melgoza. Yes. Rosa and I Melgoza. saw her. She was here. She just, yes. she just said, Rosa. Yes. It's you, Rosa. You are the winner. That's the first card. The okay. second card goes yes. to the lucky winner, Jody Ogilvy. Jody, woohoo! Yay, Jody! Congratulations! All right, so to Rosa and Jody, to the winners. congratulations. All you guys have to do is send an email to info at ginakdesigns.com and let them know that you either won the thankful for you scene card or you won the our friendship is magic reef builder card and i will get those right out to you so there we go all right there's the cards well this was so much fun guys i hope you had as much fun as we had it's always so great to see you now tom and i will not be here anymore this week because we are going to a family reunion we haven't seen some of the members of our family in oh my goodness years and years um I think the last time was several years ago at a wedding because our family lives on the East Coast. So we have um, we're going to we're going to spend a little bit of time with family for the next couple of days. And luckily, we've got our daughter taking care of the house. Our kids are watching the house for us. So who knows what we'll come home to. right? <laughs> All right. Well, so we will be back next Monday with another video for you in the me. Ooh, is and next Monday might be our release. I'm going to let you know if it's going to be our release, you're going to start to see me posting sneak peeks in our Facebook group and on Instagram. All right, you guys, in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.